Morning Lawrence. Morning. Thanks for coming to be grilled in the calf. You've been uh, a long time coming, hasn't it? You've been in the job for two and a half years now. Right. Yeah. So a while. Well, hopefully these won't pose too much of a problem for you. Let's get on, shall we? Yep. When will we see a new CF, and will there be a CG version? Well, <laughs> all I can say there is there's always uh, ongoing developments, and to uh, watch this space. <laughs> so yes, then. I just said, watch the space. I mean, uh, no, you know, Dapper always are looking to, uh, to take product forward. So um, maybe uh, there is something coming. I know aftermarket dual fuel conversions are available, but given the success of Volvo and Aveco and the growing infrastructure, don't you think you should be offering LNG trucks? Won't gas fill the gap until such a time as a viable long haul solution is found? No, I don't think we should be doing it. Uh, in, in short, I think um, in terms of gas and when you look at gas being burnt, it's, it's basically a fossil fuel, um, unless you're using biomethane. In, in, and biomethane is not available in the quantities needed for, for the trucks on the road. So, and, and if you looked at actually a gas engine, it, it doesn't actually burn hot enough in some applications, so it produces worse um, particulates and emissions. Um, so I think in that sense, no, DAF don't need to enter into that. I think the, the areas it has come in, in certain long haul, in certain areas, obviously because of subsidies, etc., it works, mm. but clearly that's not going to go forward. Um, and also you're talking a very small part of the market that's buying those trucks now. So uh, I guess, like I said at the start, the simple answer is no, I don't, don't think we'll, we'll definitely be doing it in, in the UK, um, and it's not really something that is really viable in the longer term. So you promote HVO, which you're a big fan of at the moment, and then straight to electric, is that the, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, you, it's all about stages, isn't it? I mean, I think there's some government sound bites around, you know, 2035, um, you know, over 26 tonne, under 26 tonne. Um, you've obviously got the Vecto scores, which gives some time in, in sort of 25, 35, sorry, yeah, 30. Um, but when you, when you really get to it, it's what can we do tomorrow? So if, what can you do tomorrow is you can use HBO tomorrow. Um, so why not? Um, that obviously gives you a 90% 90, uh, 90 saving well to will um, on CO2. So why not use that? And you can use it on the existing fleet, and you don't need to change the engine, and you don't, it doesn't affect the residuals, and it doesn't affect the R&M. I mean, it's a drop in fuel. You know, you can put diesel in one day, that in the next day. It, I, I find it unbelievable that um, HBO is not pushed so much, um, and, and that this gas seems a solution, because it's not. What's the worst job you've ever had? It's a difficult one, that. There's a couple of bad jobs, um, although one was uh, interesting. So. Two jobs, I think, uh, and you can then decide. I'll let you decide what's the worst. Uh, one was working in a hotel in sort of a banqueting service where it sort of started it sort of uh, eight in the morning, uh, finding all the knife and forks, laying up tables, getting all that done, uh, and then finished it sort of 11 at night because then we had to do silver service when those conferences happened mm. in the evening. So it's just the length of hours and burning my hands, keeping to clean all the cutlery and glasses and stuff. That wasn't a great job. Um, the other one was working in, I come from Essex, so I worked in Southland Seafront. For those that know, there was a place down there called Peter Pan's Playground on the seafront. It's now Adventure Island today. Um, and that was my job when I think it was 15. And there I worked from nine to 11 at night as a 15 year old, I'm not sure that's okay nowadays, with two 15 minute breaks. And um, that was on, on the machines. and great because I used to get free donuts so that's the plus <laughs> uh, the the negative side was um, the first two hours pay paid for the t-shirt which you had to wear to work there and then if you wanted a jumper I think that was the next four hours pay uh, so we all just wore t-shirts and froze um, so neither of them good that great jobs long hours not paid very much right <laughs> uh, yeah both sound pretty terrible <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not great. <laughs> if you're in government what would you do to aid the transport industry I think it's a great question and something, something that I'm really passionate about is the negative view of the transport industry and I think with, if I was in government you really need to think about how the whole transport industry can come across in a more positive light because I think it, all, it too often becomes, and I hate to say it, it's a dirty truck 
and I think people's minds, and that's years ago, because you look at the modern technology of all manufacturers, they're brilliant in terms of trucks, in terms of striving Euro four, five, six, seven electric trucks, hydrogen, everything is actually to try and make these vehicles clean, to try and make them safe. That's where all the investment goes. And yet, I think the public perception is block the roads, dirty trucks. So I think the, 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 if I was in government, the first thing is to change the narrative. And if you look at some government um, you know, uh, documentation, if you really read the words, they, they don't send the right message all the time. So it's that communication part. Uh, equally, I think they really got to get into schools and they've got to get into explaining the careers that are there. Um, because it isn't just a truck. There's technicians, there's logistics, there's uh, analysis, planning, there's marketing, there's products, there's buying, there's selling. I mean, it is a whole industry. It's not a truck. A truck facilitates an industry of jobs that people need to do. So, yeah, I'm, I, it, I always beg his belief to me, some of the language used around it. And, and I think that is the fundamental issue. And it's just not appreciated enough. And you've seen glimmers of appreciation through COVID and, and maybe Brexit and the drive. But, but to me at the moment, nothing's really sticking. It's, it's, it's sort of like, oh, yeah, that's important. Oh, it's not important now. Um, so yeah, a lot more work in that regard. And something I think us as manufacturers, we need to push um, you know, the government and people to talk to us on and say this just isn't good enough. Do you have an HGV license? No, I do not. To my eternal shame, I do not have a uh, HGV license. Um, when I became MD, I really wanted to get one. I applied, uh, my medical was due in March 19, no, March 20, sorry, uh, which wasn't great because that was COVID, so it got cancelled and, and then since then, to be honest, and everyone can say this is an opt-out, um, I just haven't had the time with you know, being the MD and COVID and all the other issues. I did look to do one recently, um, and uh, to be to be frank, um, we had a driver shortage and just seemed a bit wrong for me to go and take the place to take a test for something I'm not going to do day in, day out when other people are trying to start their career in it. So, you know, I I'm going to do it probably towards the middle of next year when I think hopefully we've got enough drivers on board and, and there's time for me to do it. Excellent. Yeah, very wise. I love the look of the new XG, but I wouldn't have one because I need more than 530 horsepower. Isn't it time for a bigger engine? No, I mean, in, in truth, the, the majority of operations in the UK only need the 480, and that's the majority of what we sell. Uh, and that's got, you know, when you think of the weight and the torque and what's needed, that is the perfect, uh, and balancing fuel efficiency, that's the perfect engine. Uh, there are some operations where obviously the 530 becomes necessary. Um, tends to do more the hilly work at the weights, um, where you could argue that 530 is needed. Um, but when, when you actually get into real heavy haulage, we actually are quite good in sharing heavy haulage with our 530. So there may be some extremes when you need uh, more power, but but in the main, you, re you really don't. So I think with, with the looking at emissions, when you're looking at vectors and reducing CO2s, actually it's more moving to alternative rather than investing in trying to go up, more, trying to go up the uh, brake horsepower. So uh, no, we, we don't see any necessity in that. Great, thank you, Lawrence. I hope that wasn't too traumatic for you. It's always good to have a good breakfast and um, yeah, some good questions. Appreciate it. Great, thank you very much, Lawrence. Thank you.